Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Uh, today we will be talking about uh, plasmonics uh, and this uh, lecture is uh, part of the lecture series regarding the nanophysics and technology uh, which has the course code of PHY445. Uh, in today's lecture basically we will discuss the plasmonics. Uh, uh, the long wavelength of light uh, creates a problem for extending up to electronics into nanometer regime regime so a possible way out is the conversion of light into plasmons so they have much shorter wavelength than light and are able to propagate uh, electronic signals so basically we need to know what is plasmons so a plasmon is a density wave in an electron gas so it is analogous to a sound wave which is a density wave in a gas consisting of molecules so plasmons exist mainly in matters where electrons are weakly bound to the atoms and free to roam the free electron gas model provides a good approximation also known as jelly models so the electrons in a metal can wobble like a piece of jelly pulled back uh, by the attraction of the positive metal ions that they leave behind. So in contrast to the single electron wave function that we encounter already and we know it already, a plasmon is a collective wave where billions of electrons oscillate in uh, particular synchronizations. So, how we can uh, develop or how we can create the plasmon resonance? So, right at the plasmon frequency, which is represented by WP, the electron gas has a resonance and it oscillates, oscillates violently. So, this particular resonance frequency increases with the electron density N. Uh, since the, elect the electric restoring force is proportional to the displaced charge that is like analogous to the force constant of a spring so similar to an oscillating spring will obtain the proportional proportionality <coughs> WP is directly proportional to N under the root so here in this figure it is clarified I mean the curve has been drawn between the electron energy loss and the relative intensity and different peaks are attributed. So the plasma's resonance can be observed in electron energy loss spectroscopy which is called as EELS electron energy loss spectroscopy. So electron with the with an energy of 2 keV are reflected from an aluminum surface and lose energy by exciting one, two, three, uh, up to many plasmas. So the larger peak at multiples of 15.3 electron volts are from bulk plasma, uh, and uh, the smaller peaks are at multiple of 10.3 electron volts are from surface plasma. So this slide also depicts that the plasma are broadly divided into many categories including the bulk plasma and uh, the surface plasma so the the peaks in the EL, EELS I mean energy loss spectroscopies energy uh, electron energy loss pass, uh, spectroscopy curve we can identify that whether the plasmas are bulk plasma or surface plasma so if the peaks are at multiple of 15.3 electron volts then such type of plasmas are called as a bulk plasma but if the peaks are at the multiple of 10.3 electron volts then such plasmas are called as a surface plasma so a question arises why metals are shiny so an electric field cannot exist inside a metal because metal electrons react to it by creating an opposing 
screen field. So an example is the image charge which exactly cancels the field of any external charge. So this is also true for an electromagnetic waves where electrons respond to the changing external field and screen it at any given time. As a result, the electromagnetic waves cannot enter a metal and get reflected back out. So however, at higher frequency, uh, for which the photon energy is high, there comes a point when the external field oscillates too fast for the electrons to follow. So what happens? Beyond this frequency, a metal loses its reflectivity. The corresponding energy in, is the plasma energy and that is equal to Ep is equal to H cut Wp. And typically the amount of uh, the, the energy is 10 to 30 electron volt. So the, the reflectivity of aluminum cuts off at its plas plasma energy that is that is shown here in the Ep as compared to the electron gas model. Here in this curve, the reflectivity is shown and the reflectivity curve is drawn between the reflectivity reflection and the photon energy and here we can see that there is a particular cutoff uh, of reflectivity and some particular energy just like in this particular case it is at 15 electron volt for aluminium. So plasmons and energy saving window coating. So the reflectivity uh, cutoff at the plasma energy can be used for energy saving window coatings which transmit visible sunlight but reflect thermal radiation back into a heated room. So that are used for storing the energy. So to get a reflectivity cutoff in the infrared region one need a smaller electron density than in mat in a metal. A high doped semiconductor is just right, such as indium tin oxide. Uh, here this material already is as a transparent front electrode for the solar cell and N C D screen. So here in the curve it is uh, drawn, the reflectivity is drawn and the curves are compared with each so the Indium tin oxide transmit visible light and reflect thermal infrared radiation. So that is why this material is used for energy savings uh, uh, and it keeps the heat inside a building. And here the reflectivity and transmission is shown that is opposite to each other. Then we see that it which region here uh, means. Uh, it, it, it is easily transmit if we see the visible regime it transmit the vis it transmit visible light and reflect thermal radiation so that is why it is used for this particular particular sort of applications so we have low dimension plasmons and that are also possible in nanostructure in nanomaterials so it is clarified that this low dimension uh, have a way become quantized and confirmed by a nanostructure that is like plasmons are reflected by the boundary condition in a thin films. So plasma in a metal nanoparticle are often uh, some uh, particular uh, resonance. So this uh, actually describes the low low dimensional low dimensional plasmons. Uh, how how we can uh, describe the quantum number of plasma and how we can identify the plasma plasma uh, the plasma could be identified uh, like any other particle of wave in a crystalline solid and such plasma has the energy e and the momentum p as a quantum number are the circular frequency w is equal to e e divided by h cut and the wave vector k is equal to p divided by h cut once can use the same thing. so here we can see the cutoff plasma that is and also the uh, identification of plasma how we can identify the plasma with the help of the quantum numbers uh, the coupling of light and plasma is also possible in some cases and that is very interesting because when we combine up to electronic with plasmonics 
uh, one has to convert light that is actually photon into con into plasma and that gives us very interesting applications that is the combination of optoelectronic with plasmons with, with plasmonics so this is not actually as simple as this looks like but uh, it's a complication that how we can com combine the optoelectronic with plasmonics so bulk plasmon or longitudinal has longitudinal oscillation uh, basically the longitudinal oscillation is parallel to the propagation directions uh, while photons are transverse if we see photons that are optical photons and it has transverse oscillation that is actually perpendicular to the direction of propagation so there is a bit uh, conflict between the one has the longitudinal oscillation and the other has transverse oscillation one is uh, parallel to the propagation direction and other is perpendicular to the propagation direction so in reality both does not match with each other so how we can do it uh, if we see surface plasma this is something we, we discuss about the bulk plasma if we look toward the surface plasma then it is it has transverse oscillation so it means it is perpendicular to the propagation uh, but they are mismatched to photon in their momentum so another problem arise and the other uh, the, the other problem is the mismatching of the momentum of the two i mean the momentum of surface plasma is uh, different from the momentum of photons so that is a question arise so the two momentum curves never cross so it is possible to provide the necessary momentum by a grating i mean we can modify the momentum of anyone that is smaller or greater or change it by grating which transmit the wave vector that uh, del k is equal to 2 pi by d and here d represent the line spacing for their particular gratings so we can attenuate total reflection also that 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 is also one of the uh, use of it uh, and that is in the attenuation we, we we use another method to couple photon and surface plasma uh, with the help of using attenuated total reflection at a metal coated glass surface I mean this uh, attenuation is possible uh, by coupling photon and surface plasma with each other and uh, this is possible at a metal coated glass surface so the exponentially damped light waves escaping from the glass can be matched to a surface plasma I mean the uh, light waves that could be escaped from the surface from the glass can be made to a surface plasma uh, in the in the metal coating so this technique is uh, surface sensitive and can be used for biosensors so this is one of the way that how we can couple the photon with surface plasma uh, and this is possible only at the surface of the metal coated glass surface uh, and that is why this particular uh, uh, arrangement is used for biosensors so here it is shown how how the surface plasma are coupled with the uh, photons and uh, the we can get the particular application out of that uh, we can discuss the dielectric constant of the surface uh, of the plasmas so how we can develop the dielectric constant and its properties uh, so the dielectric constant is actually a complex number that is the com combination of real and imaginary part normally epsilon is equal to epsilon 1 plus iota epsilon 2 so here we have two part one is epsilon 1 and other is epsilon 2 epsilon 1 describes the real part and it in physical meaning it is it describes the refraction of light refraction of light where epsilon 2 is actually imaginary that describes the absorption that uh, describe the absorption that is the physical meaning of it so how we can describe it the bulk plasma occurs at an energy of ep where epsilon 1 is equal to 0 what it mean by epsilon 1 is equal to 0 
by epsilon 1 it, it is equal to 0 it means that uh, refraction is equal to 0 the surface plasmas occur at an energy uh, where epsilon 1 is equal to minus 1 for, for, for the case of surface plasma the, the value of epsilon 1 is equal to minus 1 so that is actually the real and imaginary part and typical behavior of the dielectric constant versus the energy up for a solid with an optical transition at uh, is equal to E naught for a particular matter. So this is some uh, something about the uh, dielectric constant uh, of the surface plasma. So how we can use this uh, in photonics? Uh, so in photonics one tries to manipulate the dielectric constant by the nanostructure dielectric uh, materials that are actually called as the matter materials so particularly interesting is a gap uh, the, and the most important thing in this matter material is the uh, gap that is actually uh, expressed in EK in the EK relation of photon uh, that is analogous to the band gap of electron in a semiconductor. It's really uh, just like similar to the band gap of electron in semiconductor. So the photonic band gap causes total reflection of light in all direction. Here it is shown for some artificial crystal lattice made from polystyrene beads. Uh, the photonic band gap causes a reflectance maximum. Here we can see this is transmission uh, in percentage, and here it is. This is actually the reflectance in percentage is shown, and this is the wavelength shown in the region of uh, around 400 to 900 uh, nanometer. So the reflection and transmission both are depicted, and it has the different values in uh, different regions. So that is particular, but it is uh, mainly summarized from this slide that the gap uh, in that particular uh, uh, in the E candy region is similar to the band gap of electrons in the semiconductor materials. Uh, there is some uh, some special uh, applications or special process where we can do uh, we can make an object invisible i mean we cannot see that object so that is possible by surrounding an object with a material having the right kind of dielectric property that is actually that how the negative refractive index and that is widely used for us i mean this application and the scientists are trying to uh, commercialize this thing for especially for defense purposes and that has wide range of uh, interesting applications where we can we can try to make or create something that is uh, used to to make something invisible and this clocking simulation in two dimensions in a particular case is used in the first case a black disk uh, blocks the light coming from the left and reflect it back leaving a shadow in this case a shadow is uh, in the first case the shadow is left uh, toward the right or green side <coughs> but in the second case what happens the surrounding ring of clocking material guides the light around the disk and thereby fill in the shadow. So this is the second case where it is here. Uh, we have matter materials as well as uh, so most matter material with the negative refractive index have been made for microwaves that is below particular range. So such uh, devices are interesting for making an airplane uh, invisible to radar. So this is also used uh, to develop an airplane that is that could not be detected or could not be uh, found on their, uh, their radar, on their radar. So produce analogous matter material for visible light require nanotechnology with structures small compared to the wavelength uh, that is small compared to the wavelength of light that is about right and uh, even with the with, with that under control it is hard to 
clock the n object at all wavelengths so meta material are actually only near a resonance which occurs at a particular wavelength so we have perfect lens as well that is also used uh, uh, for uh, for medium with a refractive index that is uh, in negative and that is used for that and uh, that is also used for particular application because it has negative refractive index so negative and refracts light toward the same side of the normal that is actually not of the opposite side so this is possible in the in the lenses so this is something uh, discussion about the uh, um, plasmonic and it's various sort of very interesting application that will be com commercialized in future as some are already commercialized so uh, thank you very much for now